I often talk about the changes that have taken place in Kelowna since I've lived here. But you don't even have to go back that far. You don't have to go back to the 1980s. I started making videos here about seven years ago. Just in seven years, the Fintry Queen that you're watching there, Kelowna's pride and joy paddle wheeler that used to go up and down the lake in the summertime giving rides to tourists and locals alike, gone. It's no longer here. It is still on the lake, anchored somewhere down along the lake shore by uh, some log booms, but they don't know what to do with it. It's not, I guess it's not financially viable to be running. But there are so many other things that have vanished along our city that have changed Kelowna permanently. And like I said, you know, you can go back 20, 30 years, but even if you only go back seven years, you can see the changes, especially when you got video. Like here in the picture, you can see Kelowna Marina. They used to rent boats, jet skis there throughout the summer. It's no longer there. It is gone. Changes happening all the time. And I know that so many people say change is good, but I think a lot of change doesn't go for the better. And especially when Cindy and I have traveled around a lot in the United States or in the Caribbean, around our province, we see the effects of change that is not for the better. The loss of farmland is one example that I don't believe is for the betterment of anything. But Kelowna has changed a lot. This was the Father's Day Boyd's car show in Kelowna some years ago. And I can tell you it was some years ago because across the street from Cary Park, there was still a hotel, which is now a big parking lot. That's it, it's become a parking lot. So just in one small corner of the city, there's a hotel in the background, by the way, you can see the building. That hotel is gone. The uh, Kelowna Marina is gone and the Fintry Queen is gone. And I don't think today the events bring out as many people as they used to. Or for that matter, as many participants. We've talked with people at rodeos and they say that because of the high cost of fuel, entry fees and all these different things that have come up in the last years, rodeo cowboys just can't afford to go around to as many rodeos. So they really have to pick and choose where they go. We've talked with people in hot air ballooning, same thing. And young people are not doing many of the activities. Sports like golf, Kelowna is loaded with golf courses, but it might work here because we have a lot of seniors. But in many other parts of the country, golf, curling, all these sports, even hockey, Canada's national sport is in a decline because of the high costs associated with so many sports. I can't imagine what's going to be this summer if the price of gas is staying up for boat owners. It's not cheap running a boat. Not cheap running a car. But still, admittedly, there are people with money around. I mean, you get out into Kelowna and you're going to see everything from Lamborghinis, Ferraris, uh, Maseratis, uh, all the expensive automobiles. Like you get down to the lake shore, you see homes for five, six, eight million or even more dollars. There's a lot of money in this city. But that should never be confused with the fact that there's also a lot of poverty. There's a lot of people just getting by. And more often than not, it's either the young or the old. This winter, there was talk about that the number of visitors to the uh, hot meal program that is running Kelowna had an increase in the elderly population. Our food bank is constantly struggling to try and keep food in. So on the one hand, you got people, you know, driving around $200,000 cars, going to the golf course, enjoying wonderful lunches, while other people are struggling. And this is one of the classic problems around the world now. The inequality. 
and this is not leading to anything good. I mean, I'm surprised that so far there hasn't been major conflicts about this. Kind of like what's happened in Brazil, because in Brazil there was a big issue with the uh, underprivileged trying to get stuff uh, any way they could from those that were privileged, which led to more and more uh, closed off communities, walled in communities, private police, carjackings, kidnappings, Mexico City kidnappings, all these different things. And I can see that sooner or later things like that are going to start coming in here. I'm not talking about Kelowna specifically, but in the northern hemisphere, you know, you want to talk about the United States or Canada. Ah, yes, those were the days. Amazing days. And I'm glad that we have videos of it. Who knows, maybe you were present here during one of the times we were filming. It's a chronicle of the way things are changing, the way things are going. And I haven't looked back on this in a long time, but I tell you, looking back onto it, it even amazes me when I see how much this city has changed. And I will keep making the videos, even if I don't put them up right away, I will keep documenting the changes and what's happening. One of the big things like I, I have started focusing on is the loss of farmland. An abundance of commercial buildings, unoccupied, brand new ones. And there are many existing commercial buildings unoccupied. The loss of restaurants. We've had a number of restaurants closing down. And the other thing that I focus on a lot now has to do with the weather and climate. And what I perceive as an issue of pollution in the valley which I don't believe was present even 10 years ago, at, at least to this extent. I don't remember seeing it. But now, pretty well, anytime you go up into the mountains and look back down in the valley, you see this haze hanging over the whole valley. And I've been seeing this now since last fall and documenting it. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching our videos. And there's more coming. Lots more.